Hi there, I'm Carl, and today on Carl Makes Things, I'm going to take you through my process which I use to build wargaming terrain like what you're seeing here, this nice ruined building. I jammed this out in about two hours of construction time, although if we factor in drying times and stepping away time, it took me about four days to build. The primary materials that I used were dollar store foam board, a little bit of wall filler stucco, um, popsicle sticks, and some concrete sand that I've sifted into fine and uh, kind of coarser grits. So to start this process off, I uh, began by drawing a whole bunch of little micro sketches called thumbnails. These are really quick sketches that just kind of get some ideas down. The one that I kind of decided to go with was this one right here. It has a lot of asymmetry, which is what I like in terrain. It makes uh, for no easy decisions about it. If you put infantry on the top floor, they kind of have a hard time seeing things, which means that, you know, there's a downside for being there. Uh, once I was kind of happy with its overall kind of look, I took it into an orthographic view and then I took that into Photoshop to build some templates. So the purpose of these templates is essentially twofold. The first thing is that it helps me work out all my dimensions and actually figure them out before I get started. I can print them out, cut them out, and actually see what this is going to look like once it's put together just by kind of holding them up. And the second advantage that these kind of give is that I can actually share them with people and they can essentially replicate the terrain that I'm building on screen. So it helps you guys out too. So to get started on fabrication, I've uh, kind of parted out the templates from their sheets of paper and uh, I'm doing that to maximize the space that I can on this scrap piece of foam board, play a little bit of Tetris with these parts essentially. Uh, and then I've glue sticked them down so that I can uh, keep them in place while I'm cutting them out. It's important to note that I didn't use too much glue because we are going to be ripping these off and if you use too much glue, you will actually start separating the paper from the foam board, which is what we don't want. So with a nice sharp blade, I'm going to come in and start actually getting these templates cut down to size. Uh, any of the straight edges uh, are, that I really need to make sure are accurate, like the bottoms of the uh, actual templates, which are going to connect with the ground. I'm going to use my carpenter square to make nice straight cuts there. But every, everything else is more or less freehand. Because this is a ruined building, I don't have to worry too much about keeping edges all that accurate for everything else. And if you have a nice sharp blade, this process should take minutes. It's pretty dang easy. So for this next stage, I'm going to remove the paper, but I've actually made a few little marks to kind of index where uh, the short wall in the template is going to be. And then using a, just a bead of hot glue and my carpenter square to make sure everything's all uh, flush, I'm going to come in and basically just glue them together. So the next step uh, that I'm going to do here is just part out the second floor from its template, uh, just giving some swift cuts to uh, jam it out. Uh, and then I'm going to come in there, dry fit it a bit, make sure that it's actually you know, going to fit nicely. I don't have to do too many adjustments to it. And once I'm satisfied with the fit, I'm going to come in with hot glue and using the carpenter square to index the angles, uh, just kind of push it into place. And the last piece that I had to cut out for the template was this kind of secondary short wall floor area. Uh, it's on the other side of the short wall. Uh, and for that, I just kind of hacked it apart and then glued it in and aligned it by eye. So for the base here, I've grabbed a fresh sheet of foam board because I've kind of run out from that previous uh, kind of scrap board. And I've just freehanded a base and cut it out uh, nice and clean. And then I've thrown a few index lines to know kind of where I want to put my, uh, my actual piece of uh, terrain here. And then I've just hot glued it in there, indexed the corner, and uh, pushed it down. So once I have everything all firmly fixed together, I'm going to come in and start actually working on weathering these edges to make them feel more organic and more ruined. And the technique I'm using essentially is kind of a wave saw technique where I'm going back and forward and oscillating in and out to create different kind of depths of cut and kind of angles of chamfering on these edges. For the base, however, I'm going to make sure that I'm only doing a very light chamfer in most of these places so I don't overdo it. I want to make sure that edge is nice and strong and that means not making it too thin. So once I've completed that overall kind of edge pass to make sure everything's all nice and crunchy, uh, I'm going to start coming in and doing a lot more kind of a regular blast battle damage shapes. Uh, I've got a few techniques to do this. Mostly I'm just kind of cutting wedges into it. Uh, and some of these techniques like this one here where I've kind of cut a circle out and then kind of dug out uh, the foam from inside of it to make it feel like a crater. Um, one technique that's really easy to do is to actually take the point of your knife and just kind of put it in there and screw in holes. These end up looking a lot like kind of large caliber cannon uh, hits that have penetrated all the way through. And the last little weathering technique is just me going in and literally just ripping chunks out of it with the tip of the knife. To do some weathering on the ground, I decided to add in some kind of second story chunks uh, from that floor that have kind of fallen down uh, and have settled kind of flat on the ground there. I also adjusted the base a little bit at this stage and kind of uh, worked the shape a little bit more, refined it. 
And to finish off the lower floor, I added a few chunks of kind of fallen over wall. Uh, that short wall kind of has some nice big holes in it, and I decided to match those up with some nice chunks. And uh, with a major foam board construction finished and the weathering finished, we can start actually adding in detail. And one of my favorite pieces of detail to add uh, to these kind of ruined buildings is ruined floorboards. And these are just popsicle sticks that I've kind of cut and broken into size uh, using the scissors to do the straight cuts and then breaking the kind of jagged cuts with either the pliers you see there or by my hands. Uh, and then I've taken just little bits of kind of other board and kind of just broken them apart uh, and using a little bit of white glue and a little bit of hot glue, just kind of put them in place. The next detail we're adding is going to be adding the actual ruined kind of uh, weathered concrete texture. And the way we accomplish that is by taking a kind of rough, I think it's a hog hair brush that I'm using, and I'm just stippling or just pushing the brush loaded with this material, which is stucco, uh, onto the surface. Uh, any place where I kind of go over a little bit too much, got some of that stucco onto the wood boards, I can go in with just a wet brush and just wipe that away. And uh, that kind of property, that water solubility, it makes it really easy to do kind of hard to reach areas because you can go in there overspread and then kind of clean that area up later. With the stucco fully dry, I then come in with some glue and put down kind of an initial layer of uh, kind of grit or rubble. Uh, and then I'm going to shake off most of this just to kind of create like a base layer, let that dry. And then once I've done that, uh, I am then going to come in and start layering up actual uh, you know, kind of depth into that uh, rubble. And using a one-to-one -one mixture of water to glue, I'm gonna come in and fix that depth grit in place. So it creates like a nice organic pile of rubble that feels like it kind of belongs in that spot. And for any areas that feel a little too messy, I'm just gonna come in and clean them up with a little bit of water on some kind of implement, my finger or maybe a brush. And also while I'm cleaning up things, I decided to clean up the uh, the base here and make sure that there's no raised areas created by any kind of wall filler left over. So once all the rubble has fully dried, I came back in with some PVA glue and some fine sand and just kind of selected a few areas that I felt needed a little bit more rough texture uh, and just kind of sprinkled that on top like so. And uh, once that guy was fully dried and everything was fixed in place, uh, this guy was ready for painting. Uh, so I went out and I gave this guy a good old broad coat of gray or darker gray primer uh, to kind of start it off. Uh, and then I went over the entire thing with a coat of, or just kind of a shaggy coat of gray, a brighter gray. Um, all of the uh, you know floorboard areas, I kind of base coated those with a generic brown. And then I stippled that same brown all over uh, to kind of add some depth uh, and give some more kind of a grungy feel to the entire piece. As a final detail touch to those floorboards, I made sure all of the broken edges were nicely coated with that brown as well. So after uh, that paint is fully dried, uh, this guy is ready for a wash and I mix a simple wash up with just some black paint and some water, maybe about four or five parts water to paint. Uh, and I just kind of slap this wash all over this guy and it's gonna dry a lot brighter than it looks like right now. However, all the places where the wash is gonna kind of pool naturally, like in between the floorboards and in between all the kind of cracks in the rocks are gonna be really quite dark. And that is going to work hand in hand with the next step, which is going to be some dry brushing to push a lot of contrast into the entire miniature and make the entire thing really sing and pop. And for this step, I've gone back to using that same base gray that I kind of did the initial dry brush with. Uh, and I'm just using a big brush and a few smaller brushes to just really randomly put some patterns in there and you know, punch up a few areas. Um, not being too uh, rigid with this, I'm being very organic because this is a very organic piece. Uh, the next thing that I did was actually grab all of my kind of 3D printed uh, little bits of crates and barrels and give them a good old coat of that basic brown, uh, as well as going through this kind of grenade crate and giving those grenades that classic green kind of pineapple grenade uh, color. Uh, mix together a little bit of a coffee and cream color to do some dry brushing on these crates. And also while I was at it, I decided to do some dry brushing for the uh, actual planks on the, uh, the floor there. So again, I gave some time for those crates to fully dry and all the paint to cure on them. And then I went back over my wash and uh, decided to uh, wash them up with that black paint to put them more in line with the kind of tone of the piece. I also went back in and touched up some of the colors that got a little bit too dark in those grenade boxes. After that, I came in with like a pure cream color and uh, just kind of gave all of these crates a good dry brushing. 
And I liked how that cream looked so well, I decided to also go back and give the wood on this miniature another overall dry brush coat with that same kind of cream color. And uh, once that was done, I came in to the kind of uh, grenade crate here and I filled that space in, that lower space in, with some chamomile tea leaves and then just sealed them the same way that I sealed the rubble, just with some glue and some water. And for these barrels, uh, painting them was quite a chore because I had to put so many coats of uh, kind of my dollar store acrylic paint on them. The next time I paint uh, barrels up, I'm going to use a spray can to get that nice bright red. And then I will do what I did here, which is wash them back down to give them that kind of nice shadow detail. At this stage, I decided to experiment a little bit with some uh, kind of rope ideas I had, and this one worked out particularly well, at least for the small thin thread. Uh, I gave it a good coat of PVA and water and kind of just positioned it in place and it dried fairly uh, uh, well into that spot. After the paint fully dried on all of my crates and barrels, I laid them out uh, into the position that I wanted them to kind of finally be in and started uh, hot gluing them into place, uh, just trying to focus on making sure that none of the glue would spill over and be visible. And just like that, they were fixed into place. And as a final step here, I'm going to mix up a simple sealant of PVA glue with water. I'm not really sure on the ratios here. I just kind of mixed it up until it uh, brushed on quite well. Uh, and then I gave this guy two coats of this. Uh, it's going to do two things, this uh, sealant. It's going to help protect the paint and make sure it doesn't rub off easily uh, through handling because acrylic paint is not the toughest stuff in the world. This is just going to tough it up in a little bit. Uh, and it's also going to go into all of the kind of sand and other gravel and stuff and just give that just a little bit more help to stay affixed to the miniature. Uh, so we're not going to have any uh, gravel kind of loose uh, and falling off the guy as we uh, kind of handle it. And with that step finished, um, you know, this guy is ready to be put on the wargaming table and played with. I think it's looking pretty dang good. And uh, that's all I have for you guys for today. If you'd like to see how to paint up any of those Space Marines uh, up here on the uh, the B-roll that I've got going on, uh, you can actually check out the tutorials for both the Blood Angels and the uh, Salamanders which are up the channel right now. Uh, and if you guys are curious as to what I'm doing up next, I post work in progresses on the Discord server. And uh, honestly, it's actually quite a nice place to just come and hang out and talk about painting or 40k or games in general. And before I get going, I'd like to give everyone who supports me on Patreon a special thank you. Uh, your generosity is really helping out, and uh, it helps me kind of keep the lights on. Uh, thank you, and uh, have a good one. I'll see you guys later.